Welcome to EPG Patshala. This is your module on my Antonia written by Vila Cather. I am Shurmila Mujumdar, Associate Professor, Department of English, University of Kalyani, West Bengal. Now, before I go into the mod module itself, I would just like to uh, recollect a little bit a sweeping uh, history of the United States of America because so far as the settlers are concerned the English reached the east coast and started moving towards west and so in the 19th century whatever uh, you have read from the 19th century for example Emerson, Whitman, uh, Dickinson, uh, Hawthorne, uh, Melville all of them came from the eastern coast of the United States of America and throughout the 19th century they started moving uh, towards the western coast and the people who undertook this endeavor they were called the pioneers. Now, you know pioneer is somebody who does some path breaking work that is the lexical meaning of the word, but in the American context the pioneers are the people who started from the east moved towards the western coast of the United States of India and thereby clearing grounds for uh, primarily English uh, settlers to expand their whole on the land of United States of America and uh, you will have to remember that in 1890 the frontier as they were uh, moving towards uh, the western coast they were clearing frontiers and so in 1890 the frontier was officially declared closed. Now you see this is a novel written by somebody who does not come from the eastern coast of the United States of America. She was uh, born and brought up in Virginia and Nebraska which used to be described as the wild west. Uh, I do not know how many of you are actually familiar with a subgenre of uh, cinema which is called the western. Um, the, these films were shoot during 1950s and 60s and that uh, kind of recreates the wild west that it was in the 19th century, at least that is how it was perceived. So when you come to uh, a novel written by somebody who came from the west, you naturally expect something very different from the cultured, sophisticated uh, discourse of, uh, of the eastern people living in the eastern coast and uh, Willa Cather was particularly influenced by the vast expanse of the prairie in which she grew up and the kind of life that people led there. These people they did not go to the university, they were not part of sophisticated circle, they did not talk literature. So a completely a different set of people that she deals with um, in this particular novel. Cather achieved recognition for her novels of frontier life on the Great Plains of Nebraska and Black Hawk. She won the Pulitzer Prize for one of ours, a novel set in the First World War. Cather grew up in Virginia and Nebraska. She was intensely moved by the dramatic environment and weather, the vastness of the Nebraska prairie and the various cultures of the European American immigrant and native families in the wilderness of the prairies. Though the narrative of my Antonia is fictional, there are many similarities between Cather's life and that of the novel's protagonist. Cather creates a pre-industrial life far from the noise and speed of the uh, city and its increasing fragmentation and alienation that resulted from ongoing processes of mechanization and industrialization. So you see I come back to what I was talking about that the waste was different, very different from the East. East was industrialized, East was sophisticated, East had all the Ivy League universities, uh, but the in the West it was different. There, there was the wilderness of the prairies, uh, 
there were native families as well as some European migrants and they lived what can be described best as a pre-industrialized life. So their life was a community life, more integrated, there was no fragmentation so to say, no, uh, no not much alienation that was there in the east and uh, mostly uh, agrarian people they were and uh, Willa Cather grew up in such a uh, uh, in such circumstances and she depicts the same in this novel My Antonia. My Antonia is a story which is set in the early 1920s about the immigration of Bohemian people to America. Jim Barden is the protagonist who comes to Nebraska from Virginia as an orphan. He is raised by his grandparents. Antonia, a Bohemian immigrant comes to Nebraska with her family. She does not know English but eventually Jim teaches her. Hardships of living in the prairie, especially in the cold of the winter and the conflicting situations lead to Mr. Shimadda's premature and sudden suicide. Uh, this gentleman, he happens to be Antonia's father. The burden shift to the city and so does Antonia searching for work in order to feed her family. Now, after her father's suicide, it fell on Antonia, Antonia to provide for the family. So, the family of Jim, uh, his grandparents and himself, they moved to the city. So, does Antonia because she went out in search of jobs so that she can support her, her family. Antonia undergoes a lot of hardship but eventually emerges as a free spirit who has maintained her cheerfulness and optimism throughout life. Jim Barden graduates to be a very successful and prosperous lawyer but the sense of loss of the past always haunts him. The past which is an integral uh, and spiritual link with Antonia. Uh, now, uh, My Antonia is uh, a memory novel because you know the novel in the novel what happens the Jim uh, after a long gap goes back to um, the Nebraska prairies where she grew up with Antonia. She he establishes contact with Antonia, they have their families, they have their children, they are grown up people and they are meeting after a long time because but the tenor of the novel is about their memories, the memories that they uh, cherished, the memories that they wanted to share and it seems they have been living in the past almost as much as they are living in the present and in a way past is privileged over the present because past uh, supports them emotionally, provides them sustenance and thereby their memory becomes plays a pivotal role in the narrative of the novel. Now, uh, let me tell you something that My Antonia is the third novel in a trilogy, the first of which was called O pioneers. So, I have already talked about who were the pioneers in America and the first novel talks about these people who are moving from east towards west clearing ground for uh, British settlers to move towards the western coast and the kind of life they lived on wild prairies, their hardships, their sufferings, their endurance, their fortitude. So, the first of the trilogy is called O pioneers. The second is the song of the lurk. And and the, my Antonia is the third where two people actually play out their memory in the background of their uh, of the wild west, the Nebraska where they grew up. Jim Burden, a successful New York City lawyer, grows up in Nebraska with Antonia Shimedda, a Bohemian immigrant. They become friends for life and the memories of Antonia and her wild happy personality embedded themselves in Jim's mind everlastingly. Antonia Shimeda has an inner resilient strength that drives her to succeed and helps her survive adversity. Like the plow, she symbolizes the invincible pioneer spirit besides having the qualities of warmth, generosity and earthiness.
Lena Lingard symbolizes the modern emancipated woman who exists in her own right. Mrs. Barden is Jim's grandmother, a very helpful and concerned person who cares for her family, friends and neighbors. So if we look at the um, characters of the novel, uh, Jim is an orphan brought up by her, his parents who becomes successful and prosperous as a lawyer in later life and who is settled in the uh, in New York City. So you see Jim has moved from the west to the east and this movement is not only a physical movement, this is uh, um, a psychological move, this is a uh, an emotional move because you see Jim probably never uh, was very happy emotionally in his uh, highly prosperous, sophisticated urban life that he led in New York City and uh, Nebraska played an important role in his emotional life. So what happens? The divide between the East and the West becomes even more clear when after so many years Jim comes back to ne Nebraska to re-establish his ties with Antonia and pledges to keep in touch with her till the end of his life thereby making is very it very clear that east is very important for his emotional well-being that east is an important uh, pivot in his psychological uh, upbringing and thereby he is clearly marking out the difference between the east and the west mr burden is jim's grandfather a stoic and honorable man has great fondness for Antonia. So, Mr. Burden is a man in the wild west who is not sophisticated, not urban so to say, but he is a warm person, uh, he is a dependable, he is an honorable man who cares for his family, who cares for like his wife, cares for his neighbors and uh, because he is committed to the uh, value of a community life, he represents the uh, West and clearly marks out the difference between people who belong to the American West and the people who belong to the American East. Because you know, if you remember uh, novels which were written about 50 years before my Antonia, written by people living on the East Coast and uh, writing in the realistic tradition of American novel, you will find there are so many novels centered um, in the in the urban cities of uh, America and they are all uh, they are all uh, regretting the loss of values because of industrialization because of mechanization so in the east it was a phenomenon to reckon with even in the 1860s and 1870s the fallout of industrialization but even in the 18 1920s um, uh, just after the novel was published um, uh, it was still not such a big issue because people were still agrarian, uh, living in a community, believing in an old world value system. Mr. Shimedda is Antonia's father who migrates from Bohemia with family but loses hope and the will to uh, defy circumstances, commits suicide, thus sleeping his responsibilities as the head of a family onto Antonia. Now, uh, you see they are Bohemian, non-English speaking German people who migrated to the United States of America um, in during the time of the First World War. So, you see what was happening in Germany that these people were fleeing their motherland to come to America. There are two things to it. Uh, one is America was um, looked up to as a land of freedom where people can live their own life, they can be safe and secure and uh, it is obvious that they perceived their um, motherland Germany as not being so safe for them. So, Mrs. Shimedda, a poor underprivileged complaining woman whose only solace is Antonia's will. So, uh, a very ordinary hazif, 
who depended on her husband and uh, who didn't have much of a life of her own and because she was hugely inconvenienced by this shift from Germany to uh, the United States and because her husband committed suicide there was huge financial trouble and so when her husband passed away she started depending on her daughter Antonia. Tiny Soderball is a friend of Antonia, a hired girl who travels to the far west and earns wealth in the gold rush but in later life becomes eccentric. Well, you know, uh, if you are familiar with the Charlie Chaplin movie, you know what the gold rush is all about. There is the Stephen Crane uh, novel as well. So what happened, you know, towards the end of the 19th, at the beginning of the 20th century, it was rumored that there are huge gold mines to be excavated in California on the extreme west of the, Ameri uh, of the United States of America. And poor people, people uh, who are not earning enough to sustain themselves, they moved lock, stock and barrel to uh, the west coast and how they were completely disappointed, how some of the families um, uh, disintegrated in this uh, passage from Midwest, even East to the West. They are very well depicted both in Crane novel and uh, Chaplin movie. So, here is this uh, girl, Tiny, who happened to be a friend of Antonia. Uh, she went to the West to make money uh, during the gold rush uh, but finally becomes an eccentric that's a uh, that's a fair commentary on the gold rush as well cather has inserted an autobiographical element by paralleling her own life with jim burden his migration from virginia to nebraska is similar to her childhood happenings the shimmer thus immigrate from a comfortable bohemia to the rough poverty laden nebraska Antonia is optimistic even in the most dire circumstances and struggles throughout her life with hardships, scandals and the main fact that as a young girl she has to bear with the overbearing male dominated society. Um, now you know I think there are autobiographical elements in this because Willa Cather is a uh, lesbian and uh, it is jokingly said that he, she wanted men to be men and women to be men as well. So, um, uh, Antonia, a strong girl who can, uh, who can resist the onslaught of a hugely patriarchal uh, society when she goes out in search of uh, sustenance, some income to support her family has some autobiographical element in it because Cather wanted to see her as a strong girl who can withstand the onslaught of the men dominated society, uh, live uh, independently, live with dignity and support her family. You know these are some of the um, uh, some of the aspects of a man's life. A man is the bread uh, winner for the family, he goes out to earn, he supports the family and he lives independently and with dignity and Antonia does all these things and so this is probably a statement on the uh, part of Willa Cather as well. Jim Burden relatively is brought up in much more affluent condition and his making friends with Antonia has a deep impact on his whole life from the age of 10 to a prosperous famed middle-aged uh, man. The recollection of the lost past also instills Jim with hope that Antonia has uh, survived and owned and this is the hope which he can count on whenever he comes back home. Now you see, um, there is a, a friendship between Jim and Antonia but I don't think there is any hint of a romantic relationship uh, ever uh, 
blossoming between them. So, here is a strong girl and here is a boy, they become friends for life, uh, they are very important, mutually important for their emotional life, they sustained each other uh, psychologically throughout their lives, but there is no hint of a romance. I think that is again is a statement from uh, lesbian Willa Cather. Now we come to the plot of the novel. Jim Burden, a successful New York City lawyer, arrives in Nebraska after 20 years to re uh, relieve his nostalgia. He is a close friend of Antonia who hails from his childhood memories. Jim Burden recollects the wonderful times spent in the wild prairies of Nebraska as a child and as a young man and his intrinsic and inseparable relation with Antonia which is not based on physical love but on a spiritual level of consciousness. He has always been inspired deeply by Antonia's zeal for happiness and contentment in whatever she does, despite the fact that she is alone in her struggle against the viciousness of the world. Now, um, if you if you concentrate on the uh, title of the novel, it is called My Antonia. So, you see there is uh, some longing in it, the way uh, the novel has been named and it is My Antonia. She is a woman, I am a man and still she is my Antonia and neither she is my lover, um, not an old flame. She is a very good friend who has been, um, uh, who has provided emotional sustenance to a man. You have to remember that Antonia is a very ordinary girl belonging to the lowest rung, almost the lowest rung of the society and Jim is a very successful, prosperous man, a successful lawyer who lives in the city of New York and this is a very unequal relationship so to say, socially very unequal relationship but emotionally and psychologically this is a relationship between two equals. Jim Burden develops eventually into a successful New York City lawyer but his happiness and contentment are left behind in the ageless wild prairies of Nebraska. He always reminisces the past and is painfully conscious that it will never come back. The only hope that he is left with in the end is that Antonia has sustained herself and has a healthy family of husband and uh, children and is fully accepted the rigors of rural life. Uh, so, you see this is a novel of memory as I have argued earlier. Uh, when Jim Burden comes back to Nebraska after 20 years, he had the only hope that Antonia is well, they are to receive him warmly, Antonia. Um, so, uh, what he has lived all these 20 years in the New York City with is his memory of the prairies of Nebraska, his memories of his friendship with um, Antonia and now at the towards the end of the novel he goes back to uh, Nebraska. So, it is a travel from the west to the east and from the east to the west, from memory to the present, from the present to the uh, memory from past to future and back to past and past becomes as good as present and future in this novel. As the narrative begins, Jim is 10 years old, recently orphaned and on his way to his grandparent in Nebraska. Along with him is a farmhand, Jack Marple and an immigrant Bohemian family, the Shimedas. Upon reaching his grandparents, Jim settles down and accompanies his grandfather to, great, to greet their new bohemian neighbors and finds out about their uh, dire and frugal circumstances. Antonia Shimedda is a cheerful, warm, friendly girl who instantly likes Jim. Mr. Shimedda is over overwhelmed with disappointment and grief to see that what they had hoped for is actually bad and beneath their standing, he eventually commits suicide. Three years pass and the burdens uh, decide to move into the into town, Jim begins attending school. Soon Antonia also comes to the city in search of a job. She works at the hurdlings with her new 
um, warm personality she promptly settles down lena lenegard comes to visit her but antonia is cautious about befriending her since she has a dubious reputation now if, if we look at mr uh, shimmered we probably realize one thing uh, the futility of the american dream when they left bohemia to come to the usa they had great hopes uh, and his the his hopes were thrashed and the impact of which he could not withstand that is why he was uh, prompted to commit suicide. So, there are so many strands of American history which uh, are converging finally in this novel and uh, the American dream has traveled all the, from, all the way from the American East to the American West in the form of the gold rush and how people, how those hopes were belied and how people were devastated as a, uh, as a wrong decision on their part to move from wherever they were to the Californian gold rush in search of um, great wealth. Uh, which were completely denied to them. Antonia also works at the Carters, but she has a horrific experience and she quits. In the meantime, Jim submits himself to a rigorous schedule in preparation for his upcoming university studies. The dancing pavilion brings out the sheltered American daughters as different from the immigrant working girls. The presence of the dance hall upsets the established social order. The same girls who initially held back by barriers of language and wealth applied their strength of character acquired through hardships in order to improve their social status. And uh, you know this is probably a pattern which repeats itself whenever there are two groups of people, one group comfortably ensconced in their paternal houses, in the security of their social life which have been uh, delegated to them by their forefathers, by their parents and another group of people who have lost everything who has been up who have been uprooted um, from their countries and didn't have any comfortable uh, protected life to lead but they become stronger in character they uh, have fortitude and so finally the huge social divide between the two groups are somewhat if not bridged at least they come closer together even if as competitors. One of the main themes of my Antonia focuses on the transition from carefree childhood to responsible adulthood which is enhanced by Jim Burden and Antonia being transplanted to a new landscape and culture. They search for identity. Freedom and independence and connections that will help them to discover themselves and their capabilities while usually young adults lose themselves to isolation, confusion and rebellion. This story of my Antonia emphasizes psychological growth and maturity. So uh, in a way this is a Bildungsroman. Two people, they grow up into adulthood, they, um, they leave their uh, their places uh, in the far west of America and one goes over to New York, other also comes to city. They withstand um, all the difficulties that they faced in the city and finally become successful in their own way. So this is a novel about uh, childhood, uh, the loss of childhood the growing up of two people and their journey back to the memories of their childhood to which they cling very tightly. From its epigraph, a quote from Virgil, uh, Optima dies, prima fugit, the best days are the first to flee. And that is probably um, how most people feel about, feel nostalgic about their childhood and I am not very sure whether there is a romantic tinge to it where uh, childhood is always glorified as being closest to the creator and to heaven and growing up means growing further and further away from uh, the pristine uh, uh, purity, 
of human existence because if the city is supposed to corrupt, the city is uh, supposed to change people beyond recognition. But in this novel what happens? They change but they are not corrupted. They um, uh, adapt but they also come back to their childhood roots. So, you have read a novel which is different from the novels you have so far read uh, in your 19th century module, novels written by the Easterners and here is a novel written by a Westerner and a very different kind of novel which negotiates several issues like childhood memories, the adaptation of, of these people to the city life, they are growing up, the divide between the East and the West and you, you know the East represents certain characteristics and way like sophistication, um, uh, like uh, you know they are educated people, they have an urban uh, lifestyle and the West represents just the opposite and how do the people who move from the West to the East negotiate uh, with this uh, huge gap between their experience in the West and what they adapt to in the East. Thank you.